Okay, I just want to make sure everyone else is on mute. Please do not unmute yourself unless you are directed to speak. All right, the index number of this matter is 161335 of 2020. It is the petitioner's order to show cause to do the following. The petitioners seek to enjoin and restrain the respondents from, number one, fa from failing to provide lunch relief for station agents and locking booths during station agents' lunch periods, unless and until public hearings are conducted concerning each such partial closing, pursuant to sections 1204.15, 1205.5 of the New York Public Authorities Law. Two. They seek to enjoin and restrain respondents from part partially or fully clo closing any token booth in the New York City subway system, including but not limited to the booths listed in Exhibit C to the verified petition, unless and until public hearings are conducted concerning each such partial or full clothing, pursuant to sections 1204.15, 1205.5 of the New York Public Authorities Law. They also seek to enjoin the respondents from partially or fully closing any token booth in the New York City subway system, including but not limited to the booths listed in Exhibit C of the verified petition, unless adequate alternate arrangements for the public safety and convenience have been made, and from partially or fully clothing, closing any token booth in the New York City subway system, including but not limited to the booths listed in Exhibit C of the verified petition. And finally, from failing to conduct such hearings in, a com in each community affected by such proposed partial or full token booth closing, unless 45 days notice is given to the local community board and to the affected public, so that comments may be elicited from the community board prior to the public hearing. Council, would you please state your appearances for the record? Uh, Arthur Schwartz, Advocates for Justice Chartered Attorneys for the Petitioners. Stephen Hurd from Proskauer Rose on behalf of the respondents. Are you the only two um, that are going to plan to speak this morning on the record, Council? Mr. Hurd, Mr. Schwartz? Yeah, I'm uh, the on my side. Okay, great. I agree. If, um, if, if any testimony is needed, if there's a factual dispute, um, my only witness is Robert Kelly, who's on the screen as well. All right. We don't anticipate... Um, having to take any testimony this morning. My first question this morning is for the petitioner. Is this petition um, premature, counsel? Because one of the hallmarks of a petition of this kind is when an, a public authority has made a final determination. And it seems to me from the arguments in the papers and from all of the evidence presented that no final determination has been made by the respondents with regards to the claims that you are bringing before the court. Well, that's that's actually not accurate, Your Honor. The, the closure, the full closure of booths, whether it's for a full day or for a partial day, that they, the, the authority says that they're not going to, they're not going to do it, they haven't made up their mind yet. So yes, that, so that part of it is, is out of the case. Um, uh, but the, Elimination of the lunch reliefs, that that has, there's been a total final decision, there's no argument that's been made here that it isn't, and it's going into effect. Um, they, by conducting the job pick, they basically made a decision to only fit, to not fill these 185 positions. Um, so, I, I, when it's going to, when it goes into effect, we thought it was the 18th, but it's going to go into effect on the 31st. Um, they are doing that. It's, it's not that they're thinking about doing that. So that that is a final decision. There's been no position put forward that the authority hasn't decided whether or not to do that. Um, and uh, there's no issue that, that it's a live dispute. All right, I have a, with regards to that, I have a question um, relating to that. 
you call it elimination, the respondents call it staff reallocation. And I wonder how this, if it's called staff reallocation, how does that constitute a quote unquote closure with regards to access to the stations, thereby triggering the PAL's procedural requirements um, that that they, a hearing needs to take place? Because they're saying that the positions haven't been particularly eliminated, but people are just being moved around and in their moving around, there will be no effectual close, closing of the station. People will still have access to the stations. Um, there may be some minimal inconvenience with regards to waiting, but there's no real closure. How do you address that, Council? Well, I'm, not, I'm not sure, Your Honor. We filed papers last night, including an affidavit from Robert Kelly, uh, addressing that issue. So this is not a reallocation. That's a, that's a bogus uh, position that's being taken by the authority. There are 185 fewer people uh, working in these jobs. Um, as of the day of the pick, which was around the beginning of November, there were 166 fewer people working because the authority has not has not rehired uh, to fill openings. So the lunch room, this is not about reallocation. There will not be anybody going to these booths during the lunch periods, not a single person. So 185 times 440 booths times three shifts a day, there will not be anybody there. So to say it's a, a reallocation is just I inaccurate. The, the jobs that they say are quote, reallocated. These are called extra jobs. Right. So the extra jobs are when, when a station agent is on vacation, when a station agent is sick, when a station agent has to go to a disciplinary hearing. So then there are people who aren't assigned to any particular place. And the, the, the day before, they're told, you know, go to, uh, you know, West 4th Street Station and do booth number 4567. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's, and that will continue. Um, but it, that's not a reallocation. That's an ongoing program that they've always had. Um, they will, will not be sending out anybody, not a single person, to cover the 30 minutes that station agents go to lunch. They've, station agents have been told, starting on January 31st, starting with the implementation of the PIC, you, you lock the door, turn out the lights, go to lunch, come back, reopen the door. So. And that's the second part of what rather disingenuous about what has been uh, discussed here. They, they somehow conflate um, uh, comfort breaks with, uh, with closing the booth for a half an hour. So they say, well, a comfort break takes 10 to 15 minutes, so therefore, at most, we're adding an extra 15 minutes. People will have to wait 15 minutes. But that's not what's going on here. Everybody will leave for 30 minutes. The station agent will leave for 30 minutes. Whether or not they took a comfort break or not, they're going to be out for 30 minutes. So that means for 30 minutes, three times a day, every booth in the system will be locked. It will not be functional. Well, there will not be anybody there. Uh, and and that, that, that is a change. That is a new uh, elimination of a means, because the statute doesn't say closure. The statute says any means... Mm -hmm. Um, it says any partial closing of any passenger station or any means of public access to such facility uh, requires a public hearing. And the, this is going to close those, that means, which the appellate division has already found, that the existence of the booth person to let people in in various ways. Uh, and that case was also, when that case was argued, I argued it, when that case was argued, um, there were the, you could go through the turnstile with your Metro card. That was after the, the creation of Metro cards. The, the appellate division found, as, as did the, the, uh, the, the lower court, um, that, that elimination of somebody working in the booth to let people in and do what they're supposed to do is a reduction in the means of entry. And that requires a public hearing. So, Yes, they're not eliminating it for eight hours. They're eliminating it for a half an hour. But they're eliminating it for a half an hour, and it's not just one place or two places. According to the affidavit we got from Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Sadler, I think was his name, um, the the chief officer, he concedes, David Santoro, I'm sorry, Mr. Santoro concedes that there are 440 booths they all operate 24 hours a day. 
Uh, so there'll be three shifts a day. Uh, and if you add up the number of hours during the day, during the week, that each each one is going to be closed. It's three times seven, so three. Th uh, uh, it's an hour and a half times seven days a week. The booth is going to be closed. That is a reduction. That is going to happen. It's not. It is nothing about reallocation. It's not like oh, we're calling the lunch early people extra. That would be reallocation. We're calling lunch early people extras, and we're going to, um, you know, ha but have them cover lunch. That's a reallocation. That's like saying, well, we don't want to call them extra. We want to call them. We want to call them. We don't want to call them lunch relief. We're not going to call them extra. That wouldn't be an issue for the court. That's a reallocation. That's a redesignation of a name. That has. That wouldn't even violate the collective bargaining agreement, probably. Um, but this is about. There's 180. By January 31st, there will be 185 fewer station agents, and nobody, not a single person, um, is going to cover a token booth that. <laughs> Uh, during the lunch period, it, it's not it's no reallocation at all. Mr. Hart. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I to point out uh, to start that uh, the order to show cause required that reply papers be submitted by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Mr. Schwartz didn't file his papers until almost 11 o'clock last night. I would submit that the Kelly affidavit and that memo of law should not be considered by the court. But I think I think your question to Mr. Schwartz hit, hits it right on the head, Your Honor. Um, first of all, this is not an elimination of any positions. Let's be clear about that. The 185 people who currently do lunch relief are going to be extras and what that means is that when people call in station booth operators call in uh, absent and, or, or for any reason are unable to go to work these extras fill in 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 those station booths so that those station booths don't have to be closed or someone doesn't have to work uh, an extra shift as a result of that nobody's no jobs are being eliminated and I think Mr. Schwartz is reading uh, the, the public authority law far too broadly. Um, it requires a hearing and a board vote when there is a closure of a station or a partial closure of a station. That's not happening here. The station is going to be open. Every station is going to be open throughout the time period that it's normally uh, open. Excuse me, the Mr. Bruner decision that Mr. Schwartz relies on, the first department case, was a situation where station booths were actually being closed. 35 booths were actually being completely closed. There would be no station agent there. Hold on just a moment, Mr. Hurd. I, sure. I have a very fundamental question here because you are saying what you argued in your papers that this is a reallocation, and Mr. Schwartz is saying, no, this is an elimination. You've got to explain to me what it is. Is it an elimination, as Mr. Schwartz, are you eliminating these 185 jobs, or are you just real reallocating these individuals to another um, title or position? We are not eliminating any of these 185 jobs. Rather than coming in and replacing people during lunch, they're going to come in and replace, sometimes they're going to replace people at lunch, but they're also going to replace people who are absent and, and, and they'll have a longer shift because the person is completely absent for the day rather than just for the lunch period. So it is absolutely a reallocation. There is not a single job that's being eliminated as a result of this move. And I would point out, Your Honor, that they already contested this before, uh, before the, an arbitrator as part of a, a grievance um, saying it violated the collective bargaining agreement, and the arbitrator determined that this was not a violation of the collective bargaining agreement and was well within the rights of the transit authority to make this reallocation. But to, to be clear, because I think your, your point is, is, this, is the salient point, if this was an elimination of jobs, maybe we'd be having a different discussion. But this is not an elimination of jobs, and I think Mr. Schwartz is confused by that that this is somehow losing 185 jobs. None of these people are losing their jobs. And the winter pick that is at, at issue here made clear that the people 
in those jobs would that would be moved to what's called an extra role, which is filling in for other people, but they would not be losing their jobs. All right, hold, hold this point. Mr. Schwartz, I'm going to go back to you. From what do you get um, the title or the, the, your information saying that this is an elimination, not a real allocation? Because this is fundamental well, to our discussion. That, that's why I, I suggested we may need testimony, but Mr. Kelly's affidavit says there are, at, at the time of the pick, there were 166 fewer people. What happened is um, the, the year before, they, they're supposed to pick every six months, but they didn't pick in the spring because of COVID. Um, there was 166 fewer people picking jobs because the authority hadn't hired to replace people who left through attrition. And by January 31st, he expects it to be down, the census to be down by 185. It is a hunt, that, and Mr. Kelly can testify to that. And I, I really, you know, what Mr. Hurd says is totally untrue. There are 185 fewer positions in the stations department, and the 185 jobs that those 108 people did was lunch relief. And Mr. Hurd just said, sometimes they're going to replace people at lunch. That is totally untrue. That is a falsehood. Nobody will be replaced at lunch. That function ends. It's over. The, 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 nobody who's working extra will do lunch relief. That's what the, the documents that we put, Exhibit C, says very clearly, that no lunch relief will be done. Station agents at lunchtime are to lock their booths and leave. It's 185 fewer station agents on the job. The positions, the extra list, and we're not talking about whether some people who used to be extra list now will have a, I mean, used to be lunch relief will now have a job. That's not... That's not the issue. Um, the issue is there's 185 fewer jobs, and every single one of those jobs is lunch relief, and there will be zero lunch relief people. Uh, none. Zero. And Mr. Kelly can testify. He went through the numbers with me. I somehow doubt that that uh, that Mr. Santoro would actually disagree if he's on the if it's, he's here and Mr. Hurd wants to put him on. So to say there's no loss of jobs is not true. It's just a falsehood. And, I, and I, I mean, I'm saying that as an attorney. That is a false statement. There are 185 fewer station agents, and every single one of those jobs is a job doing lunch relief. So, the, you know, it, it, it's just a falsehood that Mr. Hurd is saying. And the other thing is, the other thing I want to say is, he also said the statute only talks about closures of a station. Um and that's not what the appellate division said in the Reuter case. In this, in the, in, they said that closing a token booth, even for one part of a day, mm -hmm. comes under the statute. They said that the statute has to be read with a because it says means of elimination or reduction of a means of entry. It doesn't say closure. Uh, we have an affidavit from Jerry Nadler that basically, you know, supports. It supported what we said in 2001, and it supports what we're saying now, that the, the appellate division said very clearly that closing the booth, even if the station is open, even if there's a MetroCard vending machine, even if everybody that comes in can, you know, who's capable of it can buy a MetroCard and slide it through the turnstile, you eliminate the booth, it triggers 12055, which requires a public hearing with notice 45 days in advance. You cannot take the language of the of the Nyberg versus Reuter case and uh, and read it to say anything other than the statute has to be interpreted broadly. The legislative history supports what we're saying. It doesn't support what Mr. Hurd is saying. And also the facts. And I'm, as I'm saying, that's why I have Mr. Kelly here. If somebody wants to testify that there's no reduction of jobs, I would I would love to cross-examine that person because that person would be testifying falsely. Uh, Mr. Hurd's misinformed, maybe he's misinformed, but that, and that's maybe why he doesn't want you to consider Mr. Kelly's affidavit, but there are 185 fewer positions and every single one of them is a lunch, lunch relief, lunch relief position. And the reason the transit authority is doing it is to cut costs. That's the reason they're doing it. And I understand that, right? They have budget problems. And they said in this department, they need to cut 185 positions. It saves them, you know, I don't know, $15 million in wages. And the way they decided to do that was to eliminate lunch relief. Uh, uh, and 
Mr. Schwartz, I'm going to stop you there because I want to go back to Mr. Hurd. It was his argument. And I'm just thinking as you are both speaking um, as to whether testimony might assist the court in coming to its conclusion. I don't believe we're going to take testimony today because no one was on notice that they should have a witness and on notice that they should prepare to cross-examine or examine a witness. But I'm thinking about that. Maybe we should um, adjourn this until tomorrow to give up people an opportunity to prepare their witnesses so that um, everyone knows what we're doing. But Mr. Hurt, would you just answer Mr. Schwartz's um, comments, please? Yes, 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 Your Honor, thank you. Mr. Schwartz is conflating two things. Yes, there is a hiring freeze going on. And as a result of that hiring freeze, when someone leaves the job, either resigns or retires, it's not being filled. And that is going on regardless of whether you enjoin uh, this move of elimination of the lunch relief position or not. So one doesn't have anything to do with the other. The question is whether the, the reallocation of the lunch relief position to an extra position is resulting in loss of jobs. That's the question. And the answer to that is no. And the jobs that are being uh, lost as a result of the hiring freeze will continue because it, the one doesn't have anything to do with the other. So he's conflating those two, two issues and saying that it's because of the reallocation of lunch relief to extras that somehow all these jobs that he's mentioning have, have been lost. That's not the case, and those will continue. With respect to the Ruder decision, what the Ruder decision was addressing, as I mentioned earlier, was that there were 35 booths that were being closed and there would be no station booth agent in those booths. And another 18 where the, an entire shift was eliminated, so there'd be no station booth person in that um, booth for that, for that full shift. As you pointed out at the beginning, this is not that situation. This is a situation where someone who can't access a station with all the different means that they, that they have available to them without a station agent is simply going to have to be to wait a few minutes for, for a station agent to return, which happens now when station agents go on a comfort break or there's an emergency, they leave the booth and they lock the door. And anyone who needs a station booth has to wait. And it's an inconvenience, but it's not a violation of the city human rights law, and it doesn't prompt 12055. It simply, it simply doesn't. He's reading this far too broadly. No means of access is being closed or part counsel, excuse me, counsel, but Mr. Schwartz does say that even though it may be for a minimal amount of time, the booth will be closed because there will be no one there to, um, to, to person the station while the station agent is not available. So that's, it, that's in effect a closure. Um, as, as we're seen by um, the Reuter case. But uh, we don't even get to that until we decide, until the court has evidence whether this is an elimination or reallocation because the determination of that question tells us in which way we need to go. So I'm wondering, counsel, if it would behoove us to adjourn this until tomorrow so that you can present witnesses for the court to hear um, testimony that the court will be able to examine and we'll be able to further flesh this out because that, for me, is the fundamental question here because if, if this is an elimination, I believe it does trigger public hearings. If this is a reallocation, it does not. And since both of you are at odds with regards to this um, and you cannot testify, I think we need some expert testimony with regards to the inner workings of the MTA and what exactly the change of title or the, the movement of these staff people, what that what that contemplates and what happens. What do you think about that, counsel? That's fine with me, Your Honor. I'm available all day tomorrow. Your Honor, that's fine with me as well. Um, tomorrow is a tough day for me, though. I was hoping maybe we could do it on Thursday or Friday. Um, one moment, please. I'm going to check now. Thursday is... You have to excuse me, I'm like Captain Kirk. I've got all these screens in front of me, but I don't have a cool outfit, so I'm trying to just do all no, this. You do have a cool outfit, Judge. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's no Starship thing on there, though. I can't be beamed up. So. And you have a bow tie. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
but let's see. No, Thursday is not good for that's our motion day, and tomorrow's not good for Friday is the the only day I could do it. I could do it Friday at ten o'clock. That's fine with me. That's fine with me, Your Honor. All right. What I'd like you to do, we'll adjourn this until Friday at ten. Council, would you exchange um, your witness lists and um, and also inform the court as to who will be testifying? And we will commence our time on Friday with the testimony, starting with Mr. Schwartz, because this is his petition. And you'll have an opportunity, Mr. Hurd, to cross-examine, and vice versa. Is there anything else you'd like to lift up to the court before we adjourn this for Friday? Your Honor, is there, uh, if we send you a list, is there, a, we, don't need to do, we don't need to do this online, but um, I don't have your chamber's email. I just have the, or should we just send it to uh, the park? No, you can send it. I'll give you our part email, which is, one moment, please. Okay, let's see. All right. This is it. Small case, S, F, C. S as in Sam, F as in Frank, C as in Charlie, dash. This is also lowercase, part 23, at nycourts.gov. Okay. And should you have any other questions, you may refer your questions to that email also.